Hey there guys, welcome to the meat shop. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a sausage recipe from scratch. I'm also gonna teach you all about the spices and non-meat ingredients like cures and binders. And then we'll make up a little batch and I'll show you um, what's the difference between a cured meat and a, and a fresh sausage. So we'll get you all that information. Then you'll be set up with the fundamentals on how to make your own sausage recipes at home and you'll be able to experiment from there. So, if you guys liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Here we go. Okay guys, so this is it. This is gonna be the introduction on how to make your own sausage recipe from scratch. We're gonna go over spices. Uh, as you can see here, I got two bowls of pork and in the end, we're gonna turn this into a, a fresh garlic sausage, which is gonna be patty. And we're gonna turn this into a cured garlic sausage patty. Um, so I guess that's kinda, two of the types of sausage. So when it comes to sausage, you have kind of five types. You have the fresh, you have cooked. So a fresh sausage, I'll give you a couple examples, would be like a breakfast sausage, a breakfast patty, uh, like a fresh frying dinner sausage, something like that, a chorizo, Italian sausage. A cooked sausage would be something like a uh, a bratwurst that's been poached and cooked ahead of time for you. So all you gotta do is heat it back up. Then you have the smoked cooked. So that's stuff like, you know, hot dogs and smokies, pepperoni, snack sticks, pepperettes, that would fall into that category. And that's probably what you guys are most familiar with. Those first three are, uh, and that we're gonna cover those in this video. So that's cooked, smoke cooked and fresh sausage. Probably the most common, most easiest. Uh, the next two are, are dried and semi-dried. So that's something like a salami, like a Genoa or a Landjager. We're not really gonna cover, uh, go in depth on those because those are really specific and there's a lot of things you have to take care of when making a fermented, dried, semi-dried product. Uh, so we're not gonna dive into that too much today. And then you have specialty products. So that's something like a head cheese or a, a, a loaf of some sort. And we're not really gonna dive into those too much, even though they kind of have lots of over, overlay. Um, so we'll cover those. The ingredients that you're always gonna find in sausage, always, 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 is salt and water. Uh, it's pretty simple. Just make sure your water is potable, clean. It doesn't have lots of hard, metals and stuff in it so which all you guys are pretty much going to have unless you got some spring water in some uh, way out in the in the bush there and then salt so we're always going to use salt in our ingredients i got everything measured out here for the little garlic one we'll do at the end but uh when you guys are doing sausage you're going to want to use salt at somewhere between one to three percent after three percent it be, kind of starts to become unpalatable and your your tongue will notice it's it's bitter so you don't wanna use more than three. Now, when I do up a spice formula, I do everything in grams per kilogram. So I've weighed these two out. This is four kilograms of ground pork shoulder, and this is four kilograms of ground pork shoulder. So I, ha I have that four kilogram weight measurement, and I wanna use my salt at 2%. So that's 20 grams per kilogram. So I would take four grams multiplied or sorry, four kilograms multiplied by 20 grams per kilogram. So four multiplied by 20, and I would use 80 grams of salt in these. And I do that for all the spices, and I'll kind of break that down as we go. So those are the two things you're pretty much always gonna find in, and then you'll always find a pepper. Uh, pepper usually goes in somewhere between two and four grams per kilogram, uh, 0.2 to 0.4%. Uh, but we'll, we won't get into the, all the spices quite yet um, because there's one other thing you'll find in all the smoked cooked sausages and uh, dry, semi-dried and some of the specialty products and that is cure. So sodium nitrate or sodium nitrite. And basically what that is, is uh, you can pick it up. It's usually called cure number one, cure number two, preg powder one, preg powder number two. Um, basically what it is, is it's a pre-mixed sodium nitrite, or in the case of cure number two, sodium nitrate mixture. Because you can't buy sodium nitrite straight. It's usually blended off at 5% or 6.5 or 6.4% in preg powder, I believe. 
So that means um, when you buy the bag of that, 95% of it is salt and 5% of it's cure. Because if you eat a teaspoon of cure, or maybe it's a tablespoon, I can't remember off the top of my head, it's very dangerous for you. It's very, uh, it can cause, it can kill you. So they pre-mix that ahead of time. Um, and basically, I'll show you, we'll give you a visual example, but the, the, the nitrates cures the meat. So it basically, well the reaction is, if you were to go right from the end, sodium nitrate turns into, reacts with acid and bacteria in the meat, which forms sodium nitrite, which forms uh, nitric oxide, and uh, that reacts with hemoglobins and myoglobins in the meat, which forms nitrosimoglobins. And that will turn it, give it that cured meat looking color. So when we do these, we'll do this guy, or whatever, vice versa, it doesn't matter. This one will be fresh, this one will be cured. And I'll add the spice mixture to this, and this one will stay nice and pink like pork. And I'll add the spice mixture to this with cure and a cure accelerator, which I'll go over, and it will turn gray until we turn, add heat to it. At that point, the cure or the nitrosomoglobins turn into, oh, I gotta remember this now. Nitrohemochromogens. There, bore your guests with that at the next barbecue. And it will turn it pink. So it'll go from gray to pink. We'll go pink, gray, pink. So that's kind of some, a precursor to some of the stuff we're gonna go into. I guess I mentioned cure accelerators. So uh, a cure accelerator, in simplest terms, they speed up uh, the conversion of nitrite to nitric oxide. Uh, so that, that gives more nitric oxide to the meat mixture, uh, allowing um, more nitric oxide for basically the meat mixture to react with to create that cured meat color. Um, so that's what a cure accelerator does. Um, there's two kinds of cure accelerators that are most common. You got ascorbic acids, which is sodium ascorbate, and you have um, sodium acids, which is sodium erythorbate. So yeah, they basically just create more nitric oxide, which speed up the cure and create more availability for the curing process to happen. Uh, there's no legal limit. Uh, there is a legal limit for cure. You don't want to go over 200 parts per million in a cured sausage, and I believe in the exception is bacon. Bacon, you can't go over 120, but cured meats is 200 parts per million. So I, if you use three grams of cure mix per kilogram, so cure number one, you'll be fine. If you're running a meat shop, three grams per kilogram will get you 200 parts per million. And I'll actually link the formula down below in case one of you guys is running a meat shop and wants to know that formula for the health inspectors. Um, but when it comes to a cure accelerator, like sodium erythorbate or ascorbic acid, or sodium ascorbate, I mean, sorry, uh, there is no legal limit. So you can use it, what I usually use it in sausages is 0.1% uh, to 0.05%, so one gram per kilogram to half a gram per kilogram. And another reason to use a cure accelerator in a cured sausage is it acts as a color stabilizer. So when you slice, if you were doing like a bologna or a mortadella or something like that, that exposed surface will turn gray quicker than the inside of the meat. And with a cure accelerator, one of those two we mentioned, it helps keep that bright red, bright pink, cured smoky look longer. Um, and there's really no, no downfall. You, you don't notice, you use it in such a small amount, you don't notice it in the end flavor, it doesn't affect your texture. It just speeds up the curing process. It makes more nitric oxide available. Okay, that's kind of a little bit of the heavy stuff. Um, I guess there's a couple other, un, well, I guess I shouldn't say uncommon, but meat, meats in, or ingredients that they use in sausages that I, that I don't really recommend using. Uh, and one is phosphates. You can use them. Um, it, Depending on how, there's also no, well, there might be a legal limit. I don't use them. I haven't used them in so long. Uh, but basically, they'll add phosphates to cured meat products. And what that does is allows the meat mixture to hold more water. So they'll use that in like commercial hot dogs and bologna because they get to add additional water in there and they get to sell you water at the price of meat. So, I mean, we're, you do need water a little bit because it helps 
dissolve the spice mixture and distribute it evenly. And then we'll actually add a little bit of protein binders and it gives the sausage a better texture, better cooking yield. You do need water. But the addition of phosphates basically is for profits and it kind of takes away the quality at the end. I mean, you can use a little bit for a little, like I said, you need a little water retention, but for home use, you, we're not gonna use it. I don't use it in any of my store products. Uh, I just feel it takes away from the quality. It's not worth it. And one last thing before we get to the spices, I forgot, is binders and fillers. People always ask me, is there fillers in your sausage? I don't use fillers. I do use binders though. So there's a bit of a difference. A filler is basically added to pick up water. And it, it's, again, it's kind of for weight gain. It doesn't, it kind of serves a bit of a purpose. It doesn't do the same as a binder though. It's mostly for weight gain. Uh, so fillers are something like wheat flour, which is really cheap, cracker meal, which is cheap, or breadcrumbs, and they'll just add it and it'll hold the water that they add. Kind of like a phosphate, but uh, we will use a binder. Uh, I am using a soy binder here today in our little sausage mix. And kind of the difference is a, a binder is usually made up of protein. So when you add that, it holds, it does too hold the water, but then it also sticks to the meat. So you get, I don't know if you've ever had a sausage and it's real crumbly, or it falls apart, or all the fat runs out that you put in there, and the water runs out or it's real dry. Binders kind of help more than a filler to keep that moisture in and improve your cooking yield. And it, it physically sticks because it's a protein and meat is protein. It's gonna stick to it and hold that moisture in and give you that more firm, snappy sausage texture in your smoked sausage or your fresh sausage at the end. So that's kind of the heavy stuff, guys. So we got uh, the couple types of sausage. Uh, we're always gonna use salt. It, I usually rec around, recommend around 2%, two grams per kilogram. Uh, cure, use it three grams, sorry, salt, 20 grams per kilogram, 2%. Cure, we use it three grams per kilogram. Uh, you know that reaction, we use a cure accelerator. Uh, you don't have to use a cure accelerator, but you should probably let your meat mixture sit in the fridge overnight if you're not gonna use it to give it uh, time for that cure reaction uh, process to happen. Uh, we don't use phosphates, and we're gonna use binders and fillers in both, of, or not fillers, binders in both of these. So, like I said, guys, I do everything in grams per kilogram. So both of these are four grams per kilogram. And there's a couple of those ingredients, like salt, which I usually use a pretty specific amount. It's always gonna be the same in all my recipes. It comes out about 20 grams per kilogram, 2%. Now, you have to note that if you're doing a cured sausage, like this one we're gonna do over here, it has sodium nitrite in it. Cure number one mix. So this is salt as well. So if the recipes, you're gonna have to compensate that in your recipe if you're making it at home. You don't want any, well you can have, it's, it's up to you on what you like, but right around that 20 grams per kilogram, total salt is what you need. So in this guy, I would do, since it's gonna be cured, we would do 17 grams per kilogram and add three grams per kilogram of cure to bring you up to that 20 grams per kilogram total. So just make a note, you always wanna hit 2%, 20 grams per kilogram. Um, so that's kind of the salt. That's gonna be in every single recipe. Uh, binder, I usually use at 10 grams per kilogram, 1%, and I'm using a soy binder. You can get uh, whey binders or you can get deheated mustard protein. Uh, and there's a couple other ones, but those are probably the most common. And I use them at 10 grams per kilogram. And like I said, that's just gonna hold all that moisture and meat protein together. And then I have this, whoa, just about drop that. Cure accelerator, it just looks like a little white powder. I'll bring it in closer here for you guys to see in a second. Half a gram per kilogram is what I'm doing today. So that kind of takes care of all the non-aromatic things that you would add to a sausage. After that, you kind of have stuff for flavor and aroma. So, you know, salt binder, cure, cure accelerator, and water. Those are kind of essential things you need to engage your palate or have a cure reaction happen. And then after that, we'll add seasonings, you could say. Um, so today I'm gonna make a little, I'm gonna make a garlic one. I'm gonna make it pretty simple. So we got the salt, we got the cure, we got the binder. That's gonna go into the cured one, into the fresh one, we're just gonna do salt binder. And uh, I have a garlic powder. 
Now, with your spices, guys, like everything kind of has like a max limit. And uh, I use dried products for the most part because I run a meat shop and I get the most consistent results that way. If I use granulated garlic, it's the same every time uh, versus if you use actual garlic, which you can, and you chop it up, it's not always the same and you're kind of adding a little extra moisture. So you kind of have to watch your moisture levels if you're doing stuff like uh, fresh vegetables, onions, garlic and stuff like that because it can affect your end texture. Uh, so that's why I like to stick with dried stuff. You don't have to. And of course, this is just a granulated garlic. I don't get anything in salt. Like I don't get a garlic salt. I don't get an onion salt because I take care of the salt ahead of time. I don't want any more than that 20 grams per kilogram, 2%. So for the most part, guys, I recommend using dried product, dried spices. And I try and get them from North America when I can because I've gotten Chinese and Indian garlic and I, it's just not the same. It doesn't have the same aroma, same flavor profile. It's just more mild. So I like to get as much as I can from North America here. Um, but for the most part, guys, when it comes to the addition of spices, and, and if you're going to make a sausage recipe at home from scratch, you got those couple of main things, salt, binder for sure. And then it's not, it's usually no more than really two to five spices in a sausage. You don't have to throw the kitchen cupboard at it. Like today in this garlic sausage, we're just going to use granulated garlic, black pepper. That's basically, uh, black pepper is an ingredient that's pretty much in every single sausage, either black pepper or white pepper. You can get it in all different mesh sizes. So you can get whole peppercorns, you can get cracked peppercorns. Uh, I believe this is a 32 mesh. You'll see it a little better in a second and you get fine stuff. But uh, basically, you're gonna use spices anywhere from one to seven grams per kilogram. So if you have something really flavorful like cumin that hits really hard, or anise seeds that you would use in a pepperoni or fennel seeds in an Italian sausage uh, that's got lots of flavor. Use them at a little lower percentage, like two grams per kilogram. And if you really want to taste that flavor, bump it up. Uh, things like paprika and pepperonis or trezos, you can use, they use a bit more than what I recommend, like, and which is good, it tastes good because that's the flavor profile you're going for with that sausage. So seven to 12 grams per kilogram with paprika and a trezo. But for the most part, guys, with strong flavored stuff, it's like one or two grams per kilogram and up to seven if you really want a, a punch of the, the flavor, if that makes sense. And I'll actually, I'll put, I'll see if I can link my template for recipe formulas down below. But, uh, and you guys kind of just got to experiment with the spices you like, but really you don't use more than five because otherwise it's, you can't really identify the flavors, you know, like with a, let's say a pepperoni, it's salt, black pepper, garlic, paprika, cayenne, and anise. That's it. Uh, with garlic sausage that I do in the store, it's salt, black pepper, garlic, and uh, with a garlic sausage, you can kind of play around with the herb, but I usually do one herb. So you can do salt, pepper, garlic, uh, and marjoram is what I'm using here today. Or you could swap it out for basil, or you could swap it out for a sage, or thyme, or something like that. Um, but basically, that's kind of how I would suggest, if you're doing this at home and you want to experiment and make your own sausage recipe, if you want to do like an American Southwest, you would salt, black pepper, caraway, maybe garlic and chipotle or garlic and jalapenos or garlic and cayenne, something like garlic and cumin, something like that. So that's kind of the intro. Now I will take you guys over how I mix the spices here. So I'll bring the camera in. So hopefully that covers that. Hopefully that's not too dense for you guys. And we'll just go over this real weigh these spices out for you real quick. Okay guys, maybe this will help you understand a little bit more uh, with the visual. But like I said, I've got four kilograms of nice ground pork shoulder. Smells good, looking forward to it. And again, I have the same on the other side. So now that I know the weight, I can multiply all those things by four. So I'm gonna shoot for it. This is gonna be for the cured sausage. 
So you can just take get my little calculator out here. So I'm going to need, I'm going to go 17 grams per kilogram of salt multiplied by 4 kilograms. So I should shoot for 68 grams of salt. And you always want to make sure this is teared. You guys can be able to see the scale. Okay, so here we are guys. Like I said, we need 68 grams per kilogram of salt. So I'm going to take my salt here. Get 68 grams. And you want to make sure that your bowl is teared and it reads zero before you start weighing. 65, 66, 68. Perfect. So we can take our salt mixture, add it to our cured garlic patties. Okay guys, how about that? That's a little better. You can see that. So like I said, you always want to make sure it's teared. T for tear. Alright, now we're going to weigh out our cure. Like I said, you, or maybe you didn't hear me, but the cure looks a lot like salt. So when you're storing this at home, you want to make sure you store it separate or labeled so you're not accidentally adding salt. Or sorry, cure when you're just doing regular cooking. Um, so we're going to use 3 grams per kilogram. There's four kilograms, so we need 12 grams of curing salt. This is cure number one, by the way. 11, come on, 12, 12. Perfect. Add that to our mix. Uh, then we're gonna use, get some sodium erythrobate, and I can use this at one to half a gram per kilogram. So four to two grams is fine. And if you want to lift that up sometimes, see how that says minus 152? When things are pretty light, like sodium erythrobate, and you're using a really small amount, so see I had two grams in there. Had it all at once. Two grams. So that's the right amount. You don't need very much cure accelerator. Add that in. Then we're going to use a binder, our soy protein. So it kind of looks like a very like light powder type stuff, kind of like flour. Soy protein, 10 grams per kilogram, so we're shooting for 40. 5, 35, 36, 44, take a little bit out. 40, boom, add our binder. And then, like I said, with the, uh, the spices, guys, I got this granulated garlic here. So it's not a garlic powder, and garlic powder works fine as well, but just so long as you're not using a garlic salt, because it's going to affect your salt content in the end. So we'll make this one fairly garlicky. Focus on that. And we'll shoot, let's put 7 grams per kilogram in, so 28 grams. Make it fairly garlicky. Give it some punch. 28 grams. Boom. And this way, guys, is the best way to do it. Because if you're using a teaspoon or tablespoon and you're using different stuff like powders and garlics, you're going to get different weights. This is the most consistent way to make sausage. It's going to be the same every single time. And uh, if, you wanna, if you make something and you want to play with it, you have the notes in grams per kilogram from there so you can turn things up, tune them down, take stuff out, add them in. Best way to do it by far. Now we're going to use uh, this ground marjoram. Uh, and like I said, in a garlic sausage, you can usually get away with one herb. So we could substitute this out for basil or we could substitute it out for thyme or a garlic. You could do like sun-dried tomatoes or something instead. Uh, you want to be careful with vegetables and stuff though. You don't add too much. It can affect your texture. Uh, so let's do one gram per kilogram. So we'll shoot for four grams of this stuff. There we go. Oh, five. Oh, no. All right, four. And that's our herb. So we'll add that in there. And pepper. And this is the uh, 32 mesh, I believe. So you can kind of see there's like a little bit of distinguishment. The fine, fine ground stuff uh, kind of just looks like a powder. And then you can get, it gets kind of bigger from there. So let's go with two or three grams per kilogram. Uh, so four times three. Let's go with 12. Make it a little peppery. 
Put some pepper there into our mixture. All right. And then the last thing we need is water. I'll be right back with the water. All right, here we go with water, guys. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned before, but I usually use water at 10% of the sausage weight. So that's 100 milliliters per kilogram of meat. Now, I know all you, lots of you guys are probably down in the States and you're watching this and you want it in pounds, uh, but you can just take this stuff and divide it by 2.2045 to get it in pounds. But grams per kilogram, it works in tenths, so it's really easy. Um, so we're gonna shoot for, we got four kilograms, four times 100 is we want 400 milliliters of water. And uh, we're not using a phosphate. You can probably, you can get up to 20% without a phosphate, but you have to do lots of mixing. And I'll show you a, a little brief touch on protein extraction here. But without, uh, without phosphates, a little extra is okay. Um, 10% works pretty nice. So we got that, our water. I'll add this in in a second and uh, we'll mix it up. Then, so this was the cured one. It had the cure in it. This one's unseasoned and you probably don't want to watch me mix all those spices out again. So I mixed them up ahead of time. Same spices, gonna go in there, mixed up and you guys will see the visual difference between a cured and an uncured sausage product. Okay guys. So we got all those spices in there. This is a cured meat mixture. I'm gonna add the water here and we'll mix until it gets very sticky. So what's happening is the salt and the added protein is drawing out the protein and sticking to the uh, pork, ground pork shoulder mixture that we have here. And it's uh, gonna get sticky and that's called protein extraction. You want that for the good uh, texture at the end. So I'll add that and mix now. You can do this with your hands. If you have a little sausage mixture, you can do it with that. But basically, you're just gonna wanna distribute all them spices around. Make sure you got clean hands when you're doing this. And I will be back in a couple minutes when I'm happy with the protein extraction. You guys don't have to watch me mix this. You know how to do this. Get it, the spices all mixed through all over the place. We'll be right back. All right, guys, I've been mixing for a little bit here and to show you when you're kind of, you're at the finish point in mixing, see how that sticks to my hand? Fingers spread. That's protein extraction. That's what you're shooting for. So from here, you guys could take this and stuff it into a natural hog casing, a fibrous casing for a larger diameter sausage, a little snack stick, pepperoni size you want. But if you guys notice, it's gone from that focus on that, maybe not. A nice pink meat color to a gray. And uh, I've also done the same with our fresh sausage. See how that one's pink? This one's gray. That's because this one has the cure and the cure accelerator in it. So that nitric oxide's reacting with the myoglobin and such to give you that kind of gray cured meat color until we add heat and then it's gonna turn that nice pink. It's so just to contrast the two side by side. Uh, it's not really showing up real awesome on my camera here, guys. But this guy here is pink, pinker, and this guy here is grayer. I'm going to cook these for you guys. And this guy here, he's going to go from gray to pink. And this guy here is going to go from pink to gray. It's going to be like that gray, white, cooked, pink pork, or <laughs> not pink, that gray, cooked pork meat look and this one's going to go to that pink cured meat look. So I'll just pop these on a frying pan and uh, show you guys the end product when they're done. All right guys, here we are. They've been cooked. They've come out of the oven. Our two fresh garlic sausage patties. And as you can see, this guy on the left has turned pink and this guy on the right has turned gray or that white cooked pork color because he had no cure and this one had the cure. And it's gonna be the same all the way through the middle. If I cook these long enough. If that looks pink on the inside, whoo, that's hot. The cured sausage color. And this guy on the other side without the cure, it's gonna be gray all the way through. Whew. Too hot, should've gave him a minute to cool down. 
that gray, ooh, steamy. Gray, pink. So there you have it, guys. That's everything you need to know. Well, the stuff, the fundamentals to get you started on mixing your own spices. Like I said, you can play around with the, the types of spices, the amount of spices, but this is a cured sausage, this is a fresh sausage, and uh, now you have the fundamentals to start playing around on your own. Hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll be making more for you always. All right, take care.